Thank you, thank you, Jochen. Hans, Hans, the chairman of our investment advisory council, and I make him work as, as Valeri just said, uh, make them work 150 percent of their time. Um, so, uh, Hans Humphreys, thank you very much for all the time and effort and the great very responsibility on your shoulders now, accepting them as well. Well, I, I was going to thank Jochen for giving me five minutes to to, to cover the global aspects. That is. Uh, you can take five more if you want. <laughs> the, uh, I, I think this was, was a very interesting day, and I hope you, you feel the same way. Um, I mean, I come from a totally different trade from diplomacy, and so to look at, at these uh, practical challenges to turn waste wood into something very valuable that, that is something you can you can touch and you can change reality. And I find I find it absolutely fascinating uh, to deal with these problems, which each of which may be small in a certain way, but they add up to fundamental changes of mentality and and of the world we live in. Now. Uh, Jochen said I should say something about geopolitics. That is, that is a very interesting notion which w really was not on, on the screen of Western Europe for a long time. Why? Because we are transcending the world of nation state which is a product of the Peace of Westphalia, you may remember, 1648, reinforced by the Vienna Congress in 1815. And um, we are pooling sovereignty, whereas the concept of the nation state, which is the core player in geopolitics, of course, is state sovereignty. But we are surrounded and have been surrounded all the time by states who believe in the old system. The United States, uh, the Soviet Union, and, and Russia today, uh, China in a different way, and others. So um, they all believe in, in the power of the state as an international actor and in fact in both dimensions of power, soft power and hard power. Whereas the European Union, where we pool part of the state, of the sovereignty of our states, is excellent on soft power, which is very important, but not enough. And we are very, very weak on hard power. So that, that is the world in which we live. And the most important representatives of the, st of the state system, as actors, are of course the United States and China. Uh, Henry Kissinger has written a very interesting book, with the title On China. And he, uh, he told me that he was an innumerable TV shows in the United States explaining what it was all about. And he said, I got hundreds of questions and none of them was China friendly. They all seemed to replace the ad adversary of the Cold War, the Soviet Union, by China. And he was profoundly worried that this approach to a vitally important relationship between two big powers well, was a very dangerous one. So um, this, this is one of the, of the problems we face in, in geopolitics today. There, there are many others. Could, I could give you Middle East or all the others. But I, I'll talk about the most the most present problem of geopolitics, which is called Ukraine, Crimea, and Russia, and the West. 
The, um, the European Union, as I said, is um, transcending sovereignty and has eliminated practically the, mi the military factor from relations between members of the European Union. The Belgians are no longer worried about the German armed forces. Yes, they may be worried, but only for one reason, that, we are too sm that our army is too small. So there's, when you know history, that, that, that is a miracle, it's welcome, but th there we are. The, um, so the European Union and the, its members are convinced that uniting states and um, committing to the same rules to the law is a force for good for them and in the world. And if there are countries who want to join the club, that is welcome. It testifies to the strength of this idea of living by the same rules, having rule of law and, and, and democracy. So what the European Union did in shaping its relations with Ukraine was something utterly innocent and benevolent. And suddenly we have to discover that Moscow sees it quite in a different light because they still live firmly embedded in the world of nation-state sovereignty, nation-state interests, and geopolitics. And they were worried that integrating Ukraine into the European Union would violate vital Russian interests. And if you ask me, was it a wise policy of, on the European Union side not to pay attention or not to pay enough attention to these preoccupations which were voiced and voiced again. I have to say, I wished, I wished we had shown a little bit more historical perspective and strategic patience. But these are commodities which are not in demand in our days. You know, with, with all the things which change in technology, uh, they change our behavior, they change our democracies, and maybe they undermine our democracies. When something happens far away, the media expect those who are in power, in politics, instantly to have an opinion, possibly think afterwards. And um, not only an opinion, but also a solution, instant solutions for every problem. It's, it's a totally impossible world. And in this world where cyber, the cyber world is now making itself felt more and more, the uh, whole issue of statehood, state sovereignty, geopolitics is increasingly seen in, in a different light. Uh, what, happened, what happened in, in Maidan, in Ukraine? Um, a relatively small group of people with high ideals some with less high ideals, gathered. Their message went out 24 hours a day to the world. The, the objective of many of the demonstrators to get rid of a profoundly corrupt political system was totally honorable. But then, this uh, 
protest movement did away with an elected government and uh, that is something which worries many who believe in certain procedures and respect for constitutional rules. And we see that this ability of small groups <clears throat> to voice protest opinion is mushrooming in other places. And it is supported by a philosophy which, um, is, predo which is predominantly American influence, but generally Western, a belief that democracy is the answer to all problems the world has. If only Russia would be like us, if only China would be like us, there would be peace and happiness in the world. I, I raised these points um, in order to say that we, that we live in a world which is increasingly complex because all these developments have an effect on our statehood, on the way we see the world, on the way we are governed. And maybe we will have to reflect a little bit more. The, the normal way, the old way to do things would take note of the facts, gather information, then put things together with what you know about history, about backgrounds, about social, economic factors, so you create a basis of knowledge but then comes the most difficult part. You try to develop something which you, in the best of cases, would call wisdom. And the wisdom of a political leader <clears throat> is not well enough developed if he only follows the last opinion polls. But then I can't return back to, to media and, and all, all that, um, what we experience day and night on CNN and other things. So, uh, good, dear friends, um, we can talk a lot about global order. And today the need to have a, an additional pillar for global order, which is called protect the environment has become more than, more than obvious. And there are other pillars of global order and stability which, which are underdeveloped or not present at all. So there's a, beyond the environment, we are going to work very hard and Green Gateway Fund will make a, a, a key difference. Small but, but uh, how do you say? Lean and mean, lean and mean, that is our policy. Um, we will make a difference, and we will work, work hard. Uh, but, but each of us in, is invited to contribute to, to a more reflective way of dealing with issues. And I would like to close <clears throat> with a comment which um, Ted already made. Um, Given that the present state of relations between Russia and the West is probably at a low point uh, since, since the, the Berlin Wall came down 25 years ago, um, this fact should not hinder us to say it is in our interest to have a good, cooperative, and trusting relationship with Russia. It is, a, and that is very important, it is in our interest, and, and interests are important to states. 
I'm, I'm encouraged that many of my friends in, in Moscow and other places in Russia say the same thing from their perspective. And the fact that Valery Sarokin and Arthur are here today and that they are <clears throat> investors on behalf of the Republic of Tatarstan in, in this fund and maintain the investment is, is a very encouraging and, and important point also from the geopolitical view. So, Valerie, I said last at the last investors meeting, um, you are one of my heroes and you were not very happy with that. You wanted more returns. <clears throat> you, will, you will get the returns and you will see our portfolio companies uh, standing in, in, li in line to get to Kazan and to Yalavuga. So don't, don't worry, just be patient, we'll, we'll achieve it. Thank you very much. This is geopolitics continuation next year. Thank you.